Hello, welcome to our online home education session for labour and pain relief. I'm Sarah Turner and my name is Garani Rahim. We are the young people midwives for the Greenwich Borough and today we're going to talk to you about labour and pain relief, what happens to your body in labour, what, what to expect and also help just give you the information that you need so that you know what to expect and you can make a birth plan. Okay, so I'm going to kick off with what the signs of labour are. There are different signs, um, but the main ones that you think about is um, contractions, your water's breaking, and a show. So here you can see the cervix, which is the opening to your womb. So this will shorten and start to open in readiness for labour. A contraction is when your, your uterus squeezes really strongly and pushes down on the baby to force the cervix to open. Most women's waters break during labour, but it can also happen before labour starts. When your waters break naturally, you may feel a slow trickle or a sudden gush of water you can't control. The water should be clear or a pale straw colour. Sometimes it can be difficult to tell whether it's your waters or urine that is leaking. When your waters break, the water may be a little bloodstained to begin with. During pregnancy, there's a plug of mucus in your cervix. This plug comes away just before labour starts or when in early labour and you may pass it out of your vagina. This small amount of sticky, jelly-like pink mucus is called a show. It may come away in one blob or in several pieces. It's pink in colour because it's bloodstained. It's normal to lose a small amount of blood mixed with the mucus. A show indicates that the cervix is starting to open. Labour may quickly follow or may take a few days. Be mindful some women get to and through labour without having a show. Here we're going to cover when to go to hospital when you think you're in labour. You can contact the hospital 24 hours a day should you need any advice or guidance from a midwife. You can find the number for the birth centre or the delivery suite at the front of your maternity notes on the bottom left hand corner. When you start having contractions, time them. Wait until each contraction is long, so 45 to 60 seconds in length, strong, each contraction makes your tummy feel hard and tight and regular. Each contraction occurs every two to three minutes, so you are having a, between three to four contractions in every 10 minutes and this pattern lasts for one hour before making your way to the hospital. If your waters break and they are clear, put a pad on and note the time. Call the birth centre or delivery suite depending on, on your birth plan and the midwife will advise you on what to do next. If the water is not clear and instead looks yellow, green or brown, this could mean baby is in distress and you will need to act urgently. Put a pad on and make your way up to the delivery suite for your baby to be monitored. If you notice you have a show which looks more like a period or you pass more than a teaspoon of fresh blood, make your way up to the delivery suite urgently. You should monitor your baby's movements at all times. They should remain constant before and throughout your labour. If you notice a sudden decrease in movement or change to your baby's pattern, please go up to the delivery suite where your baby can be monitored. So now we're going to talk about the three different stages of labour. So the first stage is known as the active stage of labour. The second stage is the uh, birth of your baby. And the third stage is the birth of your placenta and membranes. The latent phase of labour is a pre-labour phase before you are in active labour. Your contractions might be irregular, short-lasting and not very long or strong. You might find that they stop and start and they're all over the place and that's completely normal and that is just your cervix shortening and thinning out and getting ready for that first active stage of labour. And that's the time you might get told to go home, it's not quite labour yet. Now we're going to look at active labour. Active labour is the dilatation of your cervix. We talk about active labour from 4 centimetres until fully dilated. Here you can see some models of cervix. From fingertip, which is just a tiny bit open, you can see 1 centimetre here, 2 centimetres, all the way here to 9 centimetres. You can see clearly here the baby's head and the posterior fontanelle, which is right at the back of the baby's head. 
and a little bit of cervix around the outside here. It can take up to 12 hours for a first time mum to get to fully dilated in active labour, but obviously it can be quicker for some women. Now we're going to look at the second stage of labour. We consider you to be in the second stage of labour once you are fully dilated, otherwise known as 10 centimetres dilated. During the second stage, the baby descends into the birth canal. You are still contracting regularly and your contractions will be pushing your baby down further and further into your pelvis and into the birth canal, ready to come out. It can take up to two hours for a first time mum in the second stage of labour. During your contractions, your baby will be pushing down and rocking back and forward underneath this pelvic bone here. Often with a first time mum, you'll be able to feel that baby's head coming really low. You'll, you'll be able to see it from the outside, but then when your contraction stops, it will slip back in. This is normal and it's just where the biggest part of the baby's head is trying to come underneath this pubic bone. Once the biggest part of the baby's head gets under that bone, the baby doesn't slip back anymore and it stays just at the entrance to the vagina. As you're having your contractions now, you will be able to see more and more of the baby's head and it is what we would call crowning. And this is really important that at this time you listen to your midwife so that we have a nice slow birth of baby's head and minimise any risk of trauma to your perineum. So the sensation of pushing is just the same as if you were having a poo. The baby's head as it's coming down through the birth canal pushes down on the, on the rectum so anything that is in that rectum gets pushed out. That's a completely normal part of labour and you don't need to worry about it. Midwives get quite excited when we see a bit of poo because it means the baby's coming out. You can see it a bit more clearly on this uh, model here. So you can see here as the cervix is here, you've got the bladder, okay, which is really important that it's empty in labour so it doesn't stop baby's head coming down. And this here is your rectum. So as the baby is coming down through here and out through your vagina, it will be pushing this rectum closed. So anything that's in there will be coming out. So that's completely normal. And the sensation of pushing is just the same as if you were having a poo, uh, quite constipated. It's those same muscles that you use. But your body will tell you what to do. You just need to follow your body's um, guide. When baby is born, we like to encourage you to leave the cord until all of the blood has drained from mum into baby until it stopped pulsating. That's what we call delayed cord clamping. Also, we really promote um, immediate skin-to-skin -skin contact, which helps with baby regulating baby's temperature, heart rate and breathing. And it's also really good for bonding and feeding. So with the birth of your placenta, there are, there are two options. So it can be a physiological stage, which is drug-free and natural. And you can have, or you can have an active management, which is um, with an injection and the midwife would actively deliver your placenta. So we're now going to look at physiological delivery of your placenta. As we mentioned already, it's a natural drug-free delivery. It usually happens within an hour of birth. We don't give you any drugs, but one of the side effects of that is you might have a little bit more bleeding, which would be carefully monitored by your midwife. So we don't pull the placenta out. You would push the placenta out by yourself, um, sometimes squatting, sitting on the toilet, um, or sometimes um, it might separate while you're in the pool, but then you would get out for the delivery of the placenta. When you are having an actively managed third stage, this might happen if you've had a prolonged labour or an instrumental delivery. It's an injection at the point of birth in your leg, you don't feel it, um, and it just means that the uterus clamps down and contracts and the placenta comes away from the wall of the uterus. After this happens, the midwife would just gently tug on the cord and deliver the placenta. One of the things with an active management is it might raise your blood pressure slightly and it can make you nauseous. We're going to talk now about pain management. So usually people are a little bit worked up and a little bit worried about labour and they get a little bit anxious, they don't know what to expect. Um, so the best thing that you can do is have the information so that you know what pain relief options are available for you if you need them. So the options that you have are a TENS machine, um, a water, you can use water in labour which is really useful, um, Entonox which is otherwise known as gas and air, a pethidin and an epidural. Electrodes are taped onto your back and connected by wires to a small battery powered stimulator. 
Holding this, you give yourself small, safe amounts of current through the electrodes. It is most effective during the early stages while you're at home and you may be experiencing lower back pain. It is not known to cause any effects on your baby and you are free to move around with the electrodes in situ. You can purchase or hire a TENS machine. If this is something you are interested in, speak to your midwife at your next appointment for further information. Being in water can help you relax and make the contractions seem less painful. You can choose to labour in water and come out of the pool for the birth if you wish. You breathe in the gas and air through a mouthpiece, which you hold yourself. The gas takes about 15 to 20 seconds to work, so you breathe it in just as a contraction begins. It works best if you take slow, deep breaths. It can make you feel lightheaded. Some women find that it makes them feel sick, sleepy or unable to concentrate. If this happens, you can stop using it. Pethidin is injected into your thigh or buttock to relieve pain. It takes about 20 minutes to work. The effects last between two and four hours, so would not be recommended if you're getting close to pushing, otherwise known as the second stage of labor. Pethidin can make you feel woozy or sick and is therefore usually given in combination with an anti-sickness medication, which together can make you quite drowsy. We do not advise to get into the pool soon after you've had pethidin. While you sit up in a curled position, an anaesthetist will clean your back with antiseptic, numb a small area with some local anaesthetic and then introduce a needle into your back. A very thin tube will be passed through the needle and drugs are then administered through this tube. It takes about 10 minutes to set up the epidural and another 10 to 15 minutes for it to work. It does not always work perfectly at first and may need adjusting. Your contractions and the baby's heart rate will need to be continuously monitored. This means having a belt around your abdomen and possibly a clip attached to your baby's head. So now we're gonna talk about interventions in labor. This might happen, you might sometimes need a little bit of extra help with the process of labour or the birth of your baby. This might include um, an induction of labour, which could be because you have gone over your due date or there are some complications at the end of your pregnancy. Or we could be talking about instrumental delivery, which is a bontus um, delivery or a forceps delivery. And the other option for your birth, if you need an intervention, is that you need a caesarean section, which could be a planned section or it could be an emergency caesarean section. You would have been given a due date for when your baby is expected to arrive. Please be mindful this is just an estimate and it does not mean that your baby will necessarily be born on this day. What we know is out of every 100 women, only about four will go into labour on or before their due date. Most women, especially when it's their second, first baby, sorry, um, will go over their due date. What we offer to help bring baby along once you've got over your due date is a membrane sweep. What that is, is an internal examination performed by your midwife where we try and locate the cervix and if possible, sweep the waters. What that does is over the next 24 hours, is send messages to the body to get you into natural labour by giving you contractions. If your baby is not born by 41 weeks and five days, you'll be invited into the hospital for an induction of your labour. This can be quite a lengthy process and you'll be expected to stay in hospital from the point when we start the induction up until birth. When your waters break and contractions do not start on their own, we can give you a drip that goes through the vein, which help give you contractions to help speed labor along. During this time, your baby will need to be monitored via a CTG machine. If your baby needs help to be delivered, a doctor will usually use a suction cup known as a Kiwi which will be placed on the top of your baby's head and a gentle traction will be applied to help the birth of your baby's head. Once the baby's head is born, you will continue to push the rest of your baby's body out.
Sometimes we have emergencies in labour where an emergency bell will be pulled. If this happens, try to keep calm. Everybody knows their role and knows what to do. Lots of people may come into the room and some of your birth partners may be asked to leave if you have more than one. If you need to go to theatre for an emergency, you can usually take one person with you who would need to change into scrubs, just like these. <laughs> And there are usually lots of people in theatre, which is normal for the running of it, so you mustn't worry about that. If you have a planned caesarean section, it's much calmer. Um, you, will be, you will have a pre-op um, appointment beforehand where your bloods will be taken and everything will be, a consent form will be signed and you will know what to expect. In the event of a planned caesarean section, you will be given a date and a time to come into the ward and you will be looked after and taken into your caesarean section when a space becomes available. So having all this information, you are able to make yourself a little plan of what you like to aim for when it comes to the birth of your baby. Be mindful that this is a plan as opposed to something that's set in stone. Things can change always, um, especially when it's your first baby. You don't know exactly how your body's going to respond to, to labour and birth. We would like you to think about what your, you know, especially knowing that what your options are, um, to make a little note of that um, and you can make that note on your in your maternity records on the on page eight. Page eight yeah. It gives you little prompts of what to think about, um, and that includes you know what type of birth you'd like, whether it's water birth, whether it's um, a birth you know standing up, different positions that you can be in, what type of pain relief you think is will be most suitable for you, who your birthing partners might be what type of um, delivery for the placenta you would like, whether it's the active or the physiological, whether you'd like your baby to have a vitamin K injection or whether you'd like skin-to-skin -skin contact with your baby immediately when they're born. Your hospital bag should be packed by 36 weeks. Here is a list for future reference of what should be included. Thank you very much for watching, we hope it's been useful.